Hello, this is week five of the spring trimester of 2017. I'm Jennifer Marie and this is my Atelier Diary. Again, don't forget there's a summer workshop happening at my Atelier in Chicago. If you're interested in getting a taste of what it's like to be in an Atelier and what we, uh, like the, the techniques that we go through to make a drawing or a painting, sign up for this. Um, it's split into two parts so you can either take one or both it's a two-week drawing workshop and a four-week painting workshop. My instructor Magda is teaching and I'll be assisting it. All the information about it though is down below in the description box and I have my email address down there as well so if you have any questions or you want to register shoot me an email and also all of my followers get 15% off the tuition. Okay so this was an exciting week. I finished up my figure painting so it was a five-week figure painting done in a limited palette so my painting palettes, the Zorn palette, which is, I got white, black, cadmium, red, light, and yellow ochre. So that's four colors. And then it's done under natural light and from life. This week has been all about wrapping up the painting. So I've been going around the painting, making sure that nothing stands out unnecessarily. So to do this, um, this week I really focused on unifying the shadow shape and you keeping unified and unifying the light shape. Especially, I have my focal point, which is the face, the chest, and the arm that's raised. Those are the really bright, high contrasted areas. So those are the focal point. And so as it's going away from the focal point, I'm trying to keep things as they go farther away, progressively more unified so it won't be distracting away from the focal point. So I did that especially in the legs, especially the, the straight leg is that is the furthest away from the focal point and the foot. And doing the same thing with the shadow shape, making sure that everything's staying unified, even more so in the shadow shape because I want my shadow shape to be more unified than the light shape. So more of the attention is brought into the light. And then from that, more of the attention is then brought into the focal point light area. One thing I'm doing as well that is keeping everything unified, which Matt brought to my attention, is making sure that all of the shadow shapes are unified, which I know, but all of the shadow shapes within the whole painting, not just on the figure. So the, the stand that he has his arm resting on, there's a shadow. Um, coming from his arm onto the stand, making sure that that shadow is unified with the shadow of his arm. Also the pole that he's holding onto, making sure the shadow shape from his hand that is casting a shadow onto the pole, and then also the shadow shape that goes down the pole, making sure that's unified. And then another area that I did it as well was the stand that he's kneeling on and that his foot and leg cast a shadow on, making sure that those shadow shapes are still unified with the shadow shape that's actually on the figure. So before I had the figure shadow shape being fairly warm in comparison to the sh shadows that are formed on the background of the stands that he's resting his arm on and that he is resting his leg on. So what I did was I dry brushed um, that warmer shadow shape that's on the figure onto the background areas that have the shadow. So they're still distinct enough, um, but just being that the shadow shape on the stand in the background is darker because that's how it looks, but getting the temperature closer together, it unified them a lot and made everything less jumbled or pulled apart from like the figure pulled off the background, but I felt like it gave it a lot more unity and was less distracting so your eye is more led into that focal point of Brian rather than being able to see all these different things especially in the background which I don't want attention to go in there because it's the background. I also spent a lot of my time this week working on the structure and trying to get the structure and the drawing as accurate as possible and really going back into the articulation points. Uh, which is something that Matt really stresses that when you have time to work on something else, always go back to strengthen up those articulation points. And so the articulation points are the bony parts of the body that literally show the structure of the body, which is the elbows, wrists, 
hands, feet, knees, those type of things. So I was definitely spending a lot of attention back there and trying to clean things up. Also, the arms as well, especially the arm that's raised, I spent a lot of time on that. Arms, I feel like I'm getting better at them, but I still find them extremely difficult, especially with controlling paint in those areas because the form of arms are so small in comparison to pretty much everything else like the torso or legs it's a big area that I can work out transitions fairly easy because it's just a bigger area to work with but for an arm it's a lot smaller of an area to show all the transitions so I went back in there and tried to fix those up and I was finding in those areas for controlling the paint it was difficult to do these things in one day so I would do as much as I could and wait for the paint to dry up and get tacky and then the next day paint on top of that and get it even closer and closer and uh, I think before I would get kind of frustrated if I couldn't do it all at once and kind of feel like or get negative on myself about being able to not being able to get something done in one day but I think just getting it it's really helpful if I just think I'm getting it as close as I can this day as possibly far as I can push it and knowing that I have another day where I can keep working on it it's not the end of the world if I can't do something in one day because it's always easier to work on a layer that's closer to how you want it um, because then you can see the paint you've mixed up and the tr transitions that you need and then you can keep pushing it farther and farther each following day. One last thing that was really cool with this painting was the last day Magda came by and she was telling me a way that I could strengthen up the focal point which is the chest is the brightest area and she said that well my painting has uh, a nice effect of light down Brian, but in life it's a little bit more exaggerated than what I captured <clears throat> than what I captured on my painting. So she was telling me how I could brighten it up and she was explaining it. And then she ended up just taking my palette and brushes and literally showing me on my painting what she was talking about. And I love it when Matt and Magda will paint on my paintings because I feel like I am able to learn so much by watching them work rather than just explaining something verbally so that was really great to see and what she did to lighten up the area was she obviously took a lighter a value and put it in this really small part on his chest and when she did that it looks really wrong because it's way too bright than what it should be but she was taking mixing up different colors and showing me how she can blend it out and just making sure that the transitions from that really bright part of paint are gradual enough and just watching her work that way was really helpful because I know one thing for me is I'm once I get my value key established it's hard for me to be bold enough to make something go really bright on top of the painting that I'm working on because when you put a lighter value on it's just so obvious that unless you're doing it like small incremental steps putting a really strong value on an area looks just really wrong uh, but if you I guess are experienced enough and co confident enough like Magda is she knows that when she puts it on she can mix up transitions then to have everything um, really click and work together then so that's something that I would like to work on that if I see something as being my key down a little bit too dark to try and push a lighter value like what she did um, in a big way and not necessarily do these tiny incremental steps to get it brighter. But I'm really really happy with how this painting turned out. I feel like I definitely learned a whole bunch with this. I like the painting technique that I'm using a lot. I feel like I'm using different methods of how to use paint on one painting which is exciting for me to see because I love paintings that have different elements of how to how to use paint in one painting and from well for my other figure paintings it's always at the end of five weeks I start to feel like um, the last day or the last couple days I'm 
pushing myself, but I feel like I don't really know what else that I could do to make it better. So by the end of five weeks, I feel like I'm finished with my painting because I don't know how else to improve it. But for this one, I feel like if I was given another five weeks on it, I could make the painting um, a whole lot better than what it is now. And I think that's really good because um, I think working on my cast painting of the angels for such a long time, I'm learning so much with that on how to be able to keep pushing a painting and make it stronger and stronger and stronger. And I'm learning how to manipulate paint in different ways. I'm coming to a point where my limitations feel like they're not catching me up so much on being able to push a painting farther, but I'm getting more experience so I feel like I can keep working on a painting for a long time and be able to, with working on a painting for a long time, keep improving it. For the cast painting, I'm still working on the cast painting. Uh, what I've been doing was I started to work on the baby that's all the way over to the right, working a little bit on his head, the hair area on his head, and down his body. Magda came by for critique and she said something like, um, it's looking like your painting isn't really moving along and she was talking about the the focal baby head and I said that well a week ago I, I feel like I've, I pushed it as far as I can or I'm able to she was like oh uh, she thinks that it should be pushed a lot further to make it look like it has more volume to it so she told me to work on that and to do this trick with we have these cards these cardboard cards that you can make I made them out of a back, that thick cardboard that's on the back of a sketchbook where I just cut two st strips out of it that are like that much width and that tall and I have two of them and then I just cut a hole through it that's maybe the circumference of my finger <laughs> and you just look through the holes of your cards and so I put one card up to the baby head of my, the actual cast, and then the other one up to the baby head on the, the painting of the baby head. And I was looking through those holes and comparing and seeing what looked similar and what looked different. And she pointed out to me with doing that, that I didn't have enough contrast in that baby head. <sighs> so I, I totally saw what she meant and she was saying to get more of that. There's this gold paint that's brushed over this cast and she said it doesn't really look like it in my painting yet so to make sure I get those more richer gold colors in it. So I spent that day then working on the head of that cast and trying to push the contrast but then it started to get that feeling again where it was starting to look like the texture of sp spaghetti or like a brain or something and looking really noodly and not like the curls of the baby head and it looked flat and definitely not having more volume and so the next day for critique Matt said it looked like I overmodeled it which means making it too contrasted so oh, then I went back and I painted it again and I think I took too much of the contrast out then because then Magda came by for the critique the next day and was explaining to me how to get more volume in it and so I tried I painted it again and again I was really unhappy with it so Magda critiqued it this painting on Friday and she was trying to explain to me what she was try how she how to get that the, the painting effect that what she wanted and then again she ended up taking my paint and brushes and literally showing me which I was so happy that she did that because oh I was so frustrated with painting that baby head and I don't want to paint it one more time but I I want to make it look better but I just didn't know how to do that and so what she did was she painting it really made sure that all the forms of the head made sense like kind of ignoring the texture of the hair and just made sure these these big individual forms made sense in how they moved in space and make sure that there is enough volume on it um, and I try and do that too 
but I wasn't doing it in the way that she was doing it. And by seeing her paint it, I completely understood what she was saying this whole time. So by ignoring the texture and more following the planes, what she was doing was she first unified the dark tones in it, and then she unified the mid-tones in it, and then she unified the lights. And she would go back and forth and kind of unify these big areas and or make them bigger areas. So I think what I was doing with trying just everything I guess looks too disjointed and separated like all the the shadow shapes and all the mid-tones look like separate little pieces but how she was doing it was pushing things to be more way more unified than what I had and not just doing the dark and then the mid-tones and the lights and stopping with unifying that way but she'd do the darks the mid-tones lights maybe pushing the lights being more unified she'd have to go back and fix the mid-tones or the darks to make sure that everything all these shapes of tone looked big enough for how they actually appeared and she was gonna do add show me how to add the highlights on top of that but um she said it'd probably be best if the painting were to dry over the weekend and then add the highlights so nothing would get messed up. Oh, another really interesting thing she did too was, so the area that she was working on is a pretty warm area, but there's a cooler area on the head too. So she was saying that to make sure that, again, all of these things are unified. So even the, the warm temperatures and the cool temperatures are unified as well. She said to, to get that if you need to adjust and bring some more cools into the warm areas and warms into the cools. She would um, take a value, a warm value, and make sure that she would mix up on the palette the same value but of a cooler temperature and put paint there. And just if the values were the same, um, it made sense then to put cools and warms together as long as the values were the same. And in my last video I talked about how I got all of these painting instructional DVDs which have Daniel Graves, which I already watched this one, I'm gonna watch it again and then shoot a video on it. Juliet Aristides, Cesar Santos, and Max Ginsberg, and I'm going to watch and review all of these. Again, if there's one specific one you want me to review first, I will do that. The portrait painting with Cesar Santos so far, a lot of people have commented on. So after I do the Daniel Graves one, I will do this one for sure next. Also, if you're not aware, Cesar Santos has had a YouTube channel for quite a while, but he recently started doing videos. I don't know if he's calling them vlogs or what, but I'll put a link to them. They're really short and they're cool and he is silly in them and they're fun short little videos so make sure to check those out if you're interested in Cesar Santos.